What is up guys, it's Motorius here and today we have a really, really action-packed, exciting video for you guys. We have a recap of all the games that happened last night. We have the Vancouver Titans, Kings of Overwatch, about to break a record. They are one game away from attaining the most match wins in a row. We have a San Francisco Shock who actually made history with the most map wins in a row. You have Atlanta Rain missing playoffs. All this is gonna happen right now, so let's get straight into it. Before I go, I have three seconds. Please make sure you like the video, thank you. All all right, after a quick intro, let's get straight into the games. The first game, we have the Vancouver Titans against the Boston Uprising. The Boston Uprising did show some fight early. However, the Vancouver Titans completely dominated, going 4-0 taking the series. Now, Vancouver Titans, they are the kings of Overwatch. Keep this in mind, they never lost a game since their debut. That's crazy, right? This team is simply just dominating the league. Why are they dominating? Because they have players like Seo Minsu, Bumper, Haxo, Slime, Twilight, Janu. Some of the best players in their specific roles. These guys are just playing so well together. They have so much synergy. They have so much history. Let's talk about the games. So the first map, we have Lee Zhang Tower. Vancouver Titans takes that 2-0. However, the Boston Uprising were getting some kills early. They were winning some fights. But Vancouver Titans came up to the task and crushed them, putting them up 2-0 and 1-0 in the series. The next map, you have Paris. And this is where we see Haxel bring out the Genji. This was amazing to watch Haxel just come back on that legendary hero Genji that he's so good at, that he's known for. He shined on Genji. They pretty much had a dive comp going into Paris trying to cap both points. Vancouver Titans wins it 3-2. Then we go to King's Row. Vancouver Titans takes it again 3-2. Then we go to Watchpoint Gibraltar. Vancouver Titans wins 5-3. Haxel again was playing Genji on this map. So that map did go to overtime, but towards the end, Vancouver Titans just rose up to the occasion as they always do and dominated the end of the map, making them win the series 4-0. Going into this match, many people asked how the Vancouver Titans would deal with RCK Sombra. He's a great Sombra player, so everybody wanted to know how the champions or the kings of Overwatch would deal with it, and they dealt with it perfectly. Their ult management, their positioning from their support players, Twilight and Slime, was absolutely perfect. It's kind of like what we seen Bedosian do yesterday. Twilight and Slime would save their ultimates for a specific certain situation. For example, if Color Hex on Zarya would use his Graviton, Twilight would save his Transcendence, and then when the EAP comes out, Slime would come out with the barrier. It was just perfect, perfect synergy and alt management from the Vancouver Titans. And this was one of many reasons why they won King's Row and got the edge in the series. Now, who was the player of the match? It's really hard giving a player to the match for Vancouver because honestly, they all deserve it. They all played so well. But the Overwatch League actually gave it to Twilight. He played Anna. He played Zenyatta. His Anna was actually amazing. He had 16 sleeps and he was always doing damage to the Pharah Mercy in the air on the opposing team. He really neutralized Boston Uprising's strategy of diving. His Zenyatta was also amazing, like I just said. He used his transcendences perfectly and he just played played great throughout the series. If I had a chance to give it to one person, honestly, I would give it to Haxel. He played amazing on Genji. He played amazing on Brigida. But then again, it's so hard because Bumper also played amazing. Seo Mensu also played amazing on Zarya as he does time and time again. This whole roster is just a bunch of superstars. They have so much power on this team. And this is where I'm going to pose a question to you all. Who will beat the Vancouver Titans? They have never lost in the Overwatch League. They have never lost in the regular season. They have never lost in the playoffs. They are the reigning champions of stage one. They are on the verge of breaking records and making Overwatch League history because they are one match away from having the longest match win streak in a row. That's absolutely insane. Can the Vancouver Titans win their 16th consecutive win in a row? I can't wait to watch them against the Toronto Defiant. Can Toronto do the impossible? I guess we'll just find out. But that's the end for this series. Let's go on to the next series. And we have Houston Outlaws versus the Shanghai Dragons. The Shanghai took the series 3-0. One of the maps, the second map actually, Temple of Anubis, was a tie 0-0. So let's talk about the first map. First map was Oasis. Shanghai takes it 2-0. The third map was Blizzard World. Shanghai takes it 1-0. And the final map, Joker Town. Shanghai takes it 3-2. Now, if you're a Shanghai fan, they are absolutely doing amazing right now. They currently have a match win streak going on. They're playing excellent. Ding, DM, they have great players. 
On the other hand, if you're a Houston Outlaws fan, it's simply not looking good for you. Your team hasn't won a game this whole entire stage, but they only did play three matches. It's not like they played six. However, they simply just can't seem to pull it together. It's crazy because when I watch these games and I see players like Linkser going off on Widowmaker, like it doesn't even matter because Overwatch is a team game. You need all your players to put in work together. And that's what the Shanghai Dragons have. Even though they have players like Ding going off, they are all supporting their teammates in the cohesive manner where every single player on the team has a contribution to that victory. Now let's talk about the player of the match and MVP for Shanghai Dragons. And for the second time in a row, it's Ding. This guy is an absolute monster on Farah. He probably has the best barrages I've ever seen in the Overwatch League. He puts so much pressure on the enemy supports like Rockets, where even though Rockets is playing Anna and could shoot him in the air, it doesn't even matter because that's how much pressure Ding is putting onto the squad. Rockets is trying to heal and kill him at the same time. It's just not gonna work out and he's thriving in this role. Let's talk about his Sombra. That's what he's known for. He's literally one of the best Sombras in the league right now. 15,000 damage done, 10 final blows. Now watch this. 47 enemies EMP'd with his ult. Basically 80 enemies hacked, 33 hacked limbs, and only 6 deaths. I say this time and time again as a Sombra, you have to have the most hacks and the least amount of deaths and that's what you get with Ding. He played such a huge role in sweeping the Houston Outlaws and at this rate, Shanghai Dragons will be a dangerous team to watch in the future. In the third match of the day, we had the match of the week, the Hangzhou Spark against the San Francisco Shock and oh my gosh, the Shock absolutely smacked them. Complete utter domination. All right, guys, I'm actually just kidding. They didn't really dominate them like that. The first half was actually going back and forth. For example, the first map on Li Zhang, it was 1-2, Shock takes that. Paris, it went 4-5, Shock takes that. But the second half, that is what I'm talking about when I say utter domination. The third map, Eichenwall, the Shock takes it 3-0. to zero. The Spark it first held by the Shock. And on the last map, Rialto, the Shock takes it 3-1. Wow. With this win, the Shock keep adding to their record of most map wins in a row. They have won 20 maps in a row, which means that in the last five matches played, they have won 4-0 every single time. Wow, it just seems like the Shock and the Vancouver Titans are just in their own league right now. They are completely dominating the league, and they might actually face off again in the finals of playoffs, just like they did in Stage 1. So I would love to see how that rematch would play out again. Now let's talk about the player of the match. This guy deserves it. It was Rascal. He played Brigida so well. But the casters really emphasized how well his Baptiste was, especially on Paris. He had 9,000 damage done, 20,000 healing, but guess what? He had an average time of 38 seconds to his ult. He was getting Baptiste ult every 38 seconds, and he had zero deaths the entire match on Baptiste. He played great. It's really awesome seeing him thrive on his new team, Shock, and I just wish him the best. Shock fans, you should be so happy with your team. They're breaking records. They're making history. They're rising up to the challenge and they are one of the most dominant teams in Overwatch today. Congrats to the Shock. That's it for that series. Shock takes it 4-0 once again. Now let's talk about the last and final game. We have that Atlanta Rain against a Gangzu Charge. What in the Overwatch world is going on right now? That Atlanta Rain loses to the winless Valiant, and then they beat the New York Excelsior, who were undefeated in the regular season, and coming off of that win, they're supposed to be super confident, super motivated, that now they are actually a great team. They give the Charge their first win, they lose to the, ch what in the world is going on right now? And what's crazy is that this was a must win for that land or rain. Dogman tweeted out this, damn, no stage playoffs this stage. GG's to charge, you guys wanted to win today. Hopefully we could go out with a bang versus New York Excelsior in a few weeks. Wow, that's absolutely insane. But the charge did play great. Let's talk about the games. So the first map was played on Busan. Charge takes that 2-0. Then we go to Hanamura. Atlanta takes it 7-6. And throughout this series, you're going to see that the charge have mental fortitude. They have the stamina to compete all night long. Let's go to the next map. We have King's Row. Atlanta Rain loses 7-8. 
What a weird score. I mean, seven to eight. How many overtimes do you need to go to? Atlanta Rain had so many opportunities to stop the charge that Atlanta Rain only had to stop them for one minute to take the first point. Charge takes that first point and they go through that little archway to complete the map and beat the Atlanta Rain on that map, eight to seven. And finally on the last map where the Atlanta Rain had a chance to tie the game and send the series to overtime, they lost on Rialto. 2-0, Charge takes the series in total, 3-1. to one. What an absolute crazy series. Now the MVP of this match was Shu, the Zenyatta or the Ana player for the Charge. This guy played amazing on Ana. He had such an impact in these fights by using his grenade. He would take flank routes on Ana and sleep the other team, especially Baby Bay, while he's high energy. If you continue to watch him play and shine in the series, he plays such an aggressive offensive Ana, and that seems to work with the Charge. Then on his Zenyatta, he played absolutely insane, 41,000 damage, 50,000 healing done, 88 offensive assists, and only 10 deaths. Great job for the charge. The Atlanta Reign, they did play well in some aspects, but however, overall in the series, it just looked lost. I don't know what it was. They just didn't have the focus fire. They weren't playing together. Maybe they partied too long after that New York win. I'm not sure. But anyway, it was a great showing by charge. I feel like they had an ease of pressure and a burden has been lifted off their shoulder after this win because it was the first win in the stage. And getting that first win, getting your feet wet will obviously motivate you and take that mental pressure off of you and make you play better in the upcoming weeks. That's it for the recap, guys. It was a great week. We had a lot of matches going on, a lot of fun days, a lot of insane series happened. Thank you all for supporting me. My name is Motorius. If you guys want to connect with me on Twitter, just go to the description. We'll talk about the games. Remember, guys, we're a positive community. We just love Overwatch together, and that's what unites us all. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day. Peace.